वेलकम टू दिस लैबोरेटरी इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट रिजिडेटिव मॉडल्स ऑफ द मटेरियल यूजिंग टॉर्शल बिडल एंड टॉर्शल बिडल एंड एक्सपेरिमेंट सो आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू स्टेप बाय स्टेप सो फर्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एम व्हाट फ्रॉम दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डू सो द एम इज वी हैव टू फाइंड द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ऑफ द गिवन मटेरियल एंड द सेकंड एम इज वी हैव टू फाइंड rigidity modulus of the given uh, given material so this is uh, our aim in this experiment and uh, to conduct this experiment what all apparatus we need so that is given in apparatus okay so in this uh, experiment we need circular metallurgist so this is the circular metallurgist then suspended wire our uh, so here we have suspended wire and the third one meter scale so this is the meter scale and uh, stopwatch uh, to measure the time and the screw catch and the last one is two masses we need so these are all the uh, apparatus we require to perform this experiment we have two formula the first formula is moment of inertia of the disc i is equal to 2m dt squared minus d1 squared e not squared by t2 squared minus t1 squared its unit is kilogram meter squared so in this formula we have some parameter that is m represents mass mass D1, D2 represents the path, the close distance and the path to a distance between wire to the center of the mass. And then T not, T1, T2 represents time taken by uh, time taken without mass, time taken the mass which when we are facing close to uh, each other. And D2 represents the uh, mass when when we are facing at the farthest distance. And the second formula, the rigidity modulus of the material of the given wire. So n is equal to A by I by R power four L by T R square. So here I I represents moment of inertia that we can obtain from this equation number E first equation and L represents length of the wire. So from the this end to this end we have to measure that represents L and R represents radius of the wire. So this wire uh, from this wire we have to calculate the radius uh, radius with the help of screw guards. Then T R. T naught from this uh, calculation we can get it. So its unit is newton meter minus two. Let us go for demonstration of this experiment. So here we have the all the setups, all the instruments what we needed uh, to perform this experiment. So here we have catalysis and the two mass, one stopwatch and one screw guard and one meter scale. So we have everything to perform this ex uh, experiment. So let us go for it. So first of all we must know. What do you mean oscillation? So oscillation means one complete oscillation, one clockwise, and also a complete anti-clockwise. It comprises one oscillation. So what we are going to do in this experiment is, so we are going to form a uh, point uh, time for ten oscillation. Okay, then from that we are going to uh, calculate time for one oscillation. So let us go for ten oscillation at uh, time for ten oscillation. Then we can do uh, one oscillation. So let us first of all let us give a twist on this. Why a metallic disc? Okay, so it starts to oscillate clockwise and also anti-clockwise. One complete clockwise, one complete anti-clockwise. So we have to uh, wait for a while. Okay, so it will it will come for one uh, complete uh, clockwise, one complete anti-clockwise. Okay, so the, the so now it is ready for it. So at any point, at any turning point, we have to choose uh, the counting of ten oscillation. Okay, so with the help of the stopwatch, we can measure time period for 10 oscillation. So I am going to uh, start from here. So it is coming this side and coming anti-clockwise. So clockwise and anti-clockwise. So okay, this is called it one uh, one oscillations. Okay, one complete oscillation uh, clockwise and complete anti-clockwise. So this comprises one oscillation. Okay, so let us start uh, this experiment. Uh, so it is ready for now. So this point we will take. So at same time we have to start the stopwatch. So this is one, and uh, and this is two, and uh, this is three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, 
This is time. Okay, now let us start the stopwatch. So the, the, the uh, time second time time is forty one second. Okay, so this time we have to note down in this tabulation. So this tabulation it is used to find the period uh, period of oscillation. So here uh, we have to take trial one and the trial two. So from that we can take the mean value of this uh, time period for ten oscillations. So first of all we are doing without uh, any masses. Okay, so here you can see there is no mass placed over this disc. So we have to write the first reading in this trial one. Okay, after that again we have to perform the same procedure. We have to follow the same procedure to perform this instrument, uh, this experiment. Okay, so uh, we have again we have to count time for ten oscillation that we have to write in trial two. Okay, then let us go for uh, second one that is without with the masses. At closest distance, that is d1. Okay, so here we have two cylindrical masses. That masses we have to place at each other. Okay, very close to each other. So now again, uh, you, uh, you uh, simply give a small twist on it, so it is trying to uh, starts to oscillate. Okay, so uh, again we have to uh, take it uh, time for ten oscillation. So. Okay, I will start it here. So this is clockwise one and two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, then ten. Okay, stop the uh, stopwatch. So the, again, it shows the time for time for forty forty four seconds. So that we have to write it here. Okay, so trial one. In trial two, again we have to follow the same procedure. So you we are repeat the same experiment. Okay, so that value we are write at the trial two. Then you take the mean uh, mean value from this trial one and trial two. And let us go for the third experiment that is with masses at the farthest distance that is d two. Okay, so we have to place these masses at the two extreme level. Okay, at the uh, within the boundary we have to place the two masses. Okay, so again you bring it to rest. Okay, and now reset the stopwatch. Let me reset the alarm again. Ah, start. So let us give a small test in this uh, disc very carefully. Uh, so again, we have to take the time for ten oscillation. Okay, with the help of the stopwatch, we have to find. Time for ten oscillation from this disc. Okay, so I will start from here. So it is going clockwise and anti-clockwise one, and uh, this is two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, then ten. Okay, now uh, stop the stopwatch and note the time. This time we have to write down here. Okay, as a for ten nine. Uh, this is the trial one. And for trial two, as I told you earlier, we have to bring it to rest. By giving a small resistance, so it will come to resist. It will come to rest position. So again, you give a small twist to over it, so it starts to oscillate. And again, you start the stop uh, stopwatch at the desired position. I start here. This is one. Okay. So similarly, we have to do the uh, experiment that we have to write down in trial two. Okay. So from this trial one to trial two. We have to take the mean value. 
simply adding and uh, dividing by 2, you will get the mean value. So, this gives time for 10 oscillation. So, in the last column, we need time for uh, time period for 1 oscillation. So, whatever you are getting in mean value, uh, mean question here, okay, that we have to divide by 10. So, you will get the T0, T1, T2. Here, T0 represents the time for time period of 1 oscillation. Okay, one uh, time period for one oscillation without any mass. Then T1 represents time period for time period for uh, time for one oscillation with masses at the closest distance. And T2 represents time for one oscillation uh, with the masses at the fourth distance. So that we have to write down here. And um, uh, at last, we have to measure the length of the suspended wire. Okay, so in the suspended wire, we have fixed at a 50 centimeter, okay, 15 delta minus 2 meter. So from the uh, top of this DCN to bottom of this DCN, we have to measure the length of this wire is 50 centimeter that I have written here. Okay. So from this experiment, from this tabulation, uh, we have to uh, summarize whatever the uh, data we have collected. First of all, mass M. So, so let us go for calculation part. So whatever we have, we have obtained from the tabulation that we have to summarize to here. The first one is mass, mass of the cylinder. So here the mass of the cylinder is 50 gram that we have right here. And D1 represents the distance. Uh, stop it here. Start. Okay. Now let us go for the calculation part. So in this calculation, we have to summarize whatever the data we have collected. The mass of the cylinder, D1 and D2. T0, T1 and T2. So from the, all these uh, data are available in this tabulation that we have to write sequentially. Then we have to substitute the values in first formula that is the moment of inertia I is equal to 2m dt squared minus d1 square into T0 squared by T2 squared minus T1 square. So in this formula we have to substitute all this value and we have to simplify the uh, values. Okay, so we will get the I value. Okay, so the, that is the first uh, result. And second one is we have to find the rigidity modulus of the given material. Okay, so that T is equal to 8 pi I L by R power 4 uh, T0 power, uh, power square. Okay, so here I represents moment of inertia. That value we can obtain from this equation number 1. And L, length of the uh, wire that is 50 cm we have fixed, but you can change as per our. Uh, it may be 1 meter or 70 or 80, whatever it may be, we can change the length. And R, R represents radius of the wire. So, with the help of this screw guts, we have to measure the radius of this wire. That value we have to put up here. Yeah. And finally, from this experiment, we are, uh, we are going to calculate the moment of inertia of the material. And the second, one is, uh, second result is the rigidity modulus of the uh, material of the given wire. Okay, so these are these are these are all the uh, results we are we are going to obtain uh, from this uh, experiment. Thank you all.